Good morning or good afternoon, everyone. This is MSP Ignition. I'm Tom Watson, and this is our 18th episode of MSP Ignition. And today we're going to be handling overcoming sales objections. I'm joined with Nick Points, and as you probably know, if you've been on one of our webinars over the last couple of months, Nick and I have joined forces, and we have come up with a series of sales enablement webinars. And very pleased to have you. As you know, I'm the host of MSP Ignition, and Nick Points is the Director of Sales at Chartech Academy. Chartech Academy is coming up in December, and I'm going to hand it over to Nick, have him tell you a little about himself, and have him lead off. Go for it, Nick. Yeah. Yeah. So, hey, Tom, thanks, man. Uh, really good to be back here. Um, you know, excited about the topic today because, I mean, if we think about it, objections are the the only thing between us right? Uh, getting a deal signed or not. <laughs> so it's kind of this one part that we really need to, we need to make sure that we're, we're ahead of and, and doing well. So again, cited for the, uh, the session here today. Uh, everyone else, guys, as Tom mentioned, Nick Points, Director of Sales at Chartech. Um, we do have our, our last training event coming up. We'll talk about it here a little bit more towards the end, uh, but it'll be coming up here uh, December 5th through the 7th. And uh, we'll be covering more than just handling objections during during the training but uh, for today's purposes we'll focus here on objections and if you guys uh, feel free to connect with me you know via email nick at chartech.net or you can connect with me on linkedin um, after the fact i'm also uh, pretty available on there and you can find me just by searching nick points i'm the only one on there great thank you nick okay. and before we get started do you want to run over a couple things um, here at Axiant, we used to be eFolder, now we're Axiant, and we have our new business availability suite. To talk to you about that a little bit, we have business continuity that's provided by our two BDR products, those being Replibit and BRC. These are both software that install to hardware and then back up to the cloud, our Axiant cloud or your cloud for failover and spin up remotely or on site. We have Office 365 protection in the form of Cloud Finder. This is backup for Office 365, including SharePoint that is hosted on Office 365. We have VMware Cloud Replication through our product Fusion. So if you're having problems backing up VMware and being able to spin it up somewhere else, this takes it and puts a copy of it in the cloud where you can spin it up or pull it back down as needed. We have cloud-enabled file servers through our product Anchor. You can take that old clunky file server, you can cloud-enable it, make it so you can get to those files from the web online. You can put it up to our cloud, your cloud, all kinds of solutions for getting data to your end users and getting away from VPNs and file servers. With that, I'm gonna hand it back to Nick and we're gonna get started on overcoming sales objections. All right, thanks Tom. So first, I want to set the stage, guys, and understand where we are in the process, okay? Um, if we take a look, here's our sales process. We went over extensively in the last, uh, you know, uh, pieces of the Ignition series. But on a high level, right, I want to take us to the point where we've already had our marketing win, right? Somebody showed some interest. We had our first interaction. We converted that interaction to having a, a knee to knee appointment where we had to further qualify this opportunity, maintain curiosity, where we closed on the discovery. And then during that discovery is where we're getting the meat and the potatoes for the presentation. And the discovery is gonna be large part in how we're going to overcome and handle the objections we're gonna get at the end. We have our technical discovery, we have our business discovery, okay? And so we've performed that. We've secured the date and time to present with the authority to buy. Right, so right now we're sitting at, at our presentation. We have the owner, we have the influencers within the organization all sitting around the table. Okay, we went through everything we have to do and now we're getting ready to, uh, we presented the solution and now we're gonna get ready to deliver the price. And once we deliver the price, we all know that's when the objections start coming in. At the end of this, so our MSP, our mindset is I wanna close the day we present. Okay, that's our goal. If we can't close the day we present, I wanna close on a follow-up appointment date and time to show back up to pick up our check and get that agreement signed, right? That's the mentality. If we're unable to close on either one of those, I wanna get a no, right? Let's just get a no. 
I want to I want to get them back uh, into the marketing drip, and we'll come back around. Because no doesn't mean no forever; it just means no right now for whatever reason. Seek to understand. But that's what I'm looking for. So setting the stage, that's where we are. We've presented, okay? And now we're gonna get the, the kind of go into delivering the price and then we'll show you the objections that the, that you're gonna get that you wanna have <laughs> come across. And we're also gonna talk about some of the failure objections that we receive if we've failed somewhere in the process to properly mitigate that from even coming up or prevent it from um, happening in the first place. I want us all and to think Nick, about I just what want to jump in there real quick. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. This is my big thing. It took me years. I owned an MSP for 15 years, and my big thing was learning that, what Nick's talking about right there, is that the way you're really going to deal with those objections later on is if you set the stage from the beginning, that you went through and, and the way you interacted and your messaging to them and what you brought and your discovery, if you did all those things correctly, when they bring up those objections, you're going to be able to point back to those processes. And it's really going to save you a lot of time. So this is where it really happens for objections. Thanks, Nick. Hundred percent. Yeah, we got we got to lay that foundation. And here's why we want. Here's why we need to be good at this, right? Because um, I want to think of what's at stake here. Okay. So the average. So we work with we work with MSPs all over the nation, right? Globally, but in the nation here for our purposes today. We have our own MSP out here in California. Across the board, the average managed services deal that we see is about $2,000 a month, okay? That's the monthly recurring. Now, multiplying that out by our agreement term, okay? We do 36 months agreements, okay? If you guys are not doing long-term agreements, you need to start, <laughs> okay? So $2,000 a month for 36 months, Simple math, that's $72,000 at that stake here when we go to present. Now, here's something else to think about. This is one client. And, and, and Tom, you, you obviously with your MSP, what were the chances, what was the probability that if you did what you said you were going to do, you kept your clients happy, right, and productive and up and running, what, what was the the percentage chance that you would get one referral from them over the three-year period. No, Nick, that's great. I, I look at this as a compounding business, kind of like you look at his investments. If you take care of that client, they're going to send you at least one. And you know what I would do? I had an active program where I asked them for referrals. And they're going to send you if you're doing, if you're doing the basic things we're talking about. Yeah. So, so again, I want everyone on, on let's listen to you. Start wrapping our minds around this. So let's just say some, you know, your deal sizes are going to vary, but let's just say it is average, $2,000 a month. That's $72K. Plus, if we only get one referral over three years, that's $72K. And if we support that client well, right, Tom says it compounds, and it's another $72K, another $72K. So the last thing I want is my sales rep to come back and be like, eh, they weren't a fit. Or, yeah, you know, they just didn't see the value. Or, uh, it's not a big deal, right? It's only 2K a month. No, this is our business here. This is what we're, we're building upon. Now, our MSP, we took our first 100 managed services agreements, and after the end of the first three years, okay, we audited them to see where we were at. And what we found is with proper account management and farming and conducting your business reviews and addendums and growth and all these fun things that happen when we're staying in front of our clients, we had on average 51 to 78% increase from the day they signed that agreement. So I want you guys to also think about this initial deal you sign is the least amount of money this company will be spending with you for the rest of your relationship. So that's what's at stake here and why we wanna get good at this. But on the flip side, we also have to understand how much it costs for us to even present a deal. Okay, and again, I wanna have this in the back of our mind. We have our cost to acquire the opportunity, right? We have marketing investment that we're spending. We have our salesperson's time to conduct the appointments, the interactions, perform the business discovery, put together all the, all the prep work, right? Practice the presentations. We have our sales engineer's time. That's helping create our network Visio diagrams. That's doing the rapid fire reports. That's digesting all that information, helping us engineer the uh, proper solution to solve the needs we've identified. We got our assessment costs, our MSP, and again, this is going to vary, but all the investment that we're making here, 
before we even give them the, the, the price, we're into this anywhere from $1,200 to $1,500. So again, let's think about it. If we have salespeople or ourselves, if we are going out and we're spending our time and we're investing in marketing and we are unable to close business, okay, we're, we're every time we go to present a deal, it's 1200 1500 whatever your number is, there's, in, there's actual investment in money that's, that's costing us here just to go out and do, to, to have an opportunity to win the deal. So if we're not training our people, if we're not getting good at overcoming objections and setting this foundation as far as the process, I want you to realize that if you have a salesperson that's going out and presenting two, three, four times a month, and they're not bringing in any business, you will instantly be more profitable as an organization if you continue to pay the salesperson base salary and just have them stay home. All right, hope that's sinking in. So this is what's at stake here, why we wanna make sure that we're putting our effort in here and, and really seeking to, to, to get past these objections. And I wanna talk about um, pricing, okay? And I'm gonna show you how we do it, but there's a couple different challenges I see, right? Having multiple pieces, selling a project and the services, okay? Selling one, one thing is hard enough, but now when we, when we sell the project and then the, and then the services, right? It's two sales we have to make, two sets of objections we have to overcome. I'm also not a proponent of line iteming out our proposals. That just, it commoditizes our offering. It just allows Google to take over, right? It's not what we want to do. I'm also not of the mindset, right? And a lot, a lot of people want to go in and sell the project first with the mindset of, hey, I'm going to come back and get the recurring. And here's what happens, guys. We do the project, and then at that point in time, when we go to present the recurring, they're like, hmm, tell you what, man, I just spent fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 with you. I got a brand new network. Everything's fixed. Tell you what, I'm just going to go ahead and call you when it breaks. All right? So a lot of times you go back for it, it's not going to be there. Okay? We've solved their immediate need in their minds with the project. So it's really hard to go back and get the rest. And then I'm not a big proponent, again, breaking things out to you, the user or device. We give one solution price for their entire uh, organization, and they can break it out however they want to by the amount of employees they have or PCs, but people leave, devices aren't used, and then I don't want people to come back and say, hey, will you lower my price, right? So we give one total solution price for their network, okay? Uh, Tom, anything to add on that? Yeah, I really like that approach. It was always a struggle for me to figure out, I go in here and, and kind of use my MSP coincide the last few years when we had the explosion in devices uh -huh. and I remember I had these lobby I had this lobbying firm in DC and every single person like 20 people every single person had seven devices it was because they were all Apple devices everything had to be synced up at once and it became a huge asshole because then someone else would come in and we're trying to figure out how many devices they have and there's literally usually seven and so just get, getting away from that and just having this is what it costs per user and you guys, if you want to try to parse that out for your accounting purposes, that's fine. But I don't want to get into a nickel and dime situation with these guys either. I want to give them a price, get a check and move on. Yeah, absolutely guys. And, and then how you come up with your price, how we figure out our math problem on the back end, it's, it's up to you guys, right? Whether you're, you're counting. PCs meet a certain threshold, servers meet a certain threshold. It's our solution that our people can support. We can keep our clients up and running. We know it works. We know how to market to it. We know how to sell to it. It's our standardized solution. Okay, that's, that's the biggest thing. So in order for us to remove that barrier of, hey, you know what, you're, you're all in for the all in. You like that monthly price, but you know what, you don't have the, the cash for this $20,000 project. Uh, that's a bummer, right? And then you have to go into the, well, you know, will you go ahead and at least upgrade your server next quarter? You know, and then the, and then the 15 PCs the quarter after that. And you guys have all been there, right? And the clients are like, yeah, sure, yeah, we can do that. And then you even ask them to pinky promise, right? And then sure enough, next quarter comes, something happens. Budget's gone, server can't be upgraded or the PCs or whatever. It's always some 
issue, and now you're still stuck supporting old, outdated, non-standardized equipment. So we use the hardware as a service to remove that barrier of entry, okay, put it all, all uh, to the client as part of a monthly, it allows us to standardize our network, so it's a win-win. So as I'm going through the pricing here and the numbers, I do not want you guys to get hung up on the numbers at all, okay? They're, for, for your purposes, they're irrelevant to you. I just want you to, to take away the concept of how we price it and why we're pricing it. And then I'm gonna show you how it unfolds later on in the presentation and especially when it comes to objections. So the first part we're gonna figure out is, what, what's our monthly managed services, all the support, everything we're gonna be doing for this organization. <clears throat> so in this example, let's just say it's two grand. We keep it simple. Now, I break that down to what we call a reduced to ridiculous. I take the monthly amount, I divide it by 172 average work hours in a month, eight hours a day, five days a week, comes out to $11.63 an hour. So when I present this at the end, I like to present it in the terms of reduced to ridiculous. Hey, we're gonna do all these great things for your organization for less than the proposed, or less than the minimum wage here in California, $2,000 a month. I want the mindset to be around the, the, this price because if you really think about it, everyone on this, you guys make hiring and firing decisions for 10, 15, 20, 25 dollar an hour employees all the time without having, having to get a, a, an act of Congress involved and, and bring in your neighbors and your partners and your silent investors and everything else. So I want the mindset to be, hey, you know what? <laughs> You're getting our organization, everything that comes along with it, for less than what you would pay your receptionist up front, okay? So that's the reduced to ridiculous. And again, I'll show you where it comes into play. Now, I have an investment to make. This network I'm saying I'm, I'm, we're gonna go present to, I have, a, I, to get them to standards, there's gonna be an investment for me, for my, for my backup, for the, my UTM, you know, AV, whatever that's gonna be, my licensing costs. So let's just say that's 10 grand. That's my, what I have to stroke a check for this is what I need. I'm going to purchase the, uh, the network to get them up to standards. So I'm going to take that 10 grand and I'm just going to divide it by my desired ROI. So our MSP, I'm going to divide it by 12 months. Okay. I want my money back in 12 months. Sometimes we do it less, but is it just an average? You've got to take a look at your numbers and you figure out where you want. But at the end of the day, I want to make my money back in 12 months. So the 24 months following that is gravy. So if you divide that by 12, you're $834 a month. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add that to the monthly. There's my Haas number. So now I'm at 28.34 a month, $16.48 an hour. Now, we have a project price. So I take, let's just say the investment's 10 grand. I'm gonna double it, there's 20 grand, that's what, and again, I'm gonna show you where this comes into play later, okay, when we present. But all of this pricing strategy needs to be done before you go to present, guys because there's nothing worse than you get the objection and you're not prepared for it. Well, let me go back and work some numbers or let me go figure it out. And then now you have to break the momentum. You have to stop. You have to, to, to reconvene and time kills all deals. So I have my project price, 20 grand. Then strategically, I'm going to take what this project would be and I'm going to divide it by 36 months, which is the term of my agreement. That comes to $555 and 56 cents. Because what I'm going to do if I get the objection of, hey, I want to own my own equipment, I've got to be prepared for it. So I'm going to go ahead and back it out now. So I took 2834 I subtracted $555, which now brings my monthly to 2278 So worst case, they decide they own the network. They're going to stroke a check for twenty grand, and I'm making an extra $278 as far as my monthly. But in their mind... When they see this price come, come across, if they do, again, it only comes up if there's an objection, but now it's like interest-free financing form. So now they take another look at it. So the reduced to ridiculous now would be 1325. And I want you guys to remember these numbers because they're going to come up. Tom, anything, anything to add on that as far as the strategy? No, I really like this, Nick, because what you've done is you've broken it down by what you need to bring in what this is costing you, what you need to get out of it. And that's something I think a lot of people early on don't do. They, they're entering these situations in these contracts. They don't understand completely their overhead and they don't understand what it's gonna take and how long to the point where they start going positive and it's worth doing, what that's gonna take. So the, doing these calculations early, 
they insulate you from those problems later on because everyone out there has contracts that aren't profitable. And uh-huh. it's avoidable if you're following a process like this. Yep. All right. And guys, if you have questions at all, please, I know we're, we're, we're going fast on this. And when you get numbers involved in strategy, if at it, all it, oh, you guys are confused or just want more clarification, we'll try to get to them at the end. But if not, email me, email Tom. Uh, we'll make sure that, uh, you know, we get back to you on this to make sure you have what you need. Okay. But I'm just laying the foundation here for our pricing strategy. Now, if you're leasing uh, through like Great America or something like that, your strategy may be, it'll be similar, but obviously there's um, differences as far as the percentages. Uh, we self-finance with our MSP, so you know we have a little bit more flexibility in how we're going to calculate our numbers. So there we go. So <clears throat> when we go to deliver the price, okay, let's say now I'm setting the stage again. We've just finished presenting. I went over um, all of our solutions and the services, and, and I've tied them back to the business issues we've identified, how we're going to solve them. I went through the before and the after network diagram of here's your network as it sits today. Here's the problems that you're having. And then I show them the moving forward. Once we get a hold of the network, what it's going to look like and how it's going to solve those problems. At the end of that, when I'm, when you are done presenting, when you have said everything you possibly can say, then it's okay to deliver the price up until there. If they hit you earlier on, then you can say something like, well, you know, um, I'm saving the best for last, right? And get through it because once you give the price, they're done listening to you. Okay. So you got to bottle it up. Once you get done presenting, you went through everything you need to cover. Then, holy cow, Nick, um, this looks like a lot, man. How much is this going to cost? Or what's this going to set us back? And at that point, you're ready. And you can say, hey, you know what? <laughs> Tom, I'm glad you asked, buddy. It's not free. We deliver it our solution in two parts. Okay. And then I'll show my finger. I'll hold the two because I want to burn in mentally in their, in their heads, right? Our solution comes in two parts. First, we need to talk about our services again. Okay. So I have my presentation up behind me and then I'll go back to my screen. That looks like this. And I'll say, so again, our solution comes in two parts. The first part is everything you see behind me, every piece of the services we went through, every piece of this pie, we're going to come on board with your company and solve all these challenges for $16.47 an hour, $2,834 a month. Once you give this part, you pause, okay? They're going to ask you, well, what's the second part? Because right now, they're not, they're not out of the woods yet. They're like, you know, okay, well, hey, this isn't that bad, but man, what's the second part? Okay, and if they don't ask you, then you go into it. Say, now the second part of our solution, we got to talk about the project, okay? So here's how that goes. And I say, now, the second part, and I, show, I go back to the Visio diagram, and I'm showing them, say, as you can see, to get your company to the place where it needs to be to solve the challenges we've went through, we're in need of a significant investment to the tune of 20 grand for the hardware, the licensing, the project and implementation to get it done. There's our project price coming into play. Now, once you do this, you pause for two, maybe three seconds because they may say, okay, <laughs> and now you got a project along with it, okay? So we pause for a couple seconds and then we say, now, you make the, if you are willing to authorize our agreement and you bring us on as your technology partner, our technology is willing to make this investment for you for that same $16.47 an hour. And then you're done. Okay? Then you just be quiet. And I, I promise you, 10 seconds is going to feel like a minute. A minute's going to feel like an hour. But pause. Okay? Nick, and you got to wait, wait, because let them let them talk at this point. Go ahead, Tom. I like to pause and just stare at them like nicely, you know, but yeah. kind of yeah. a flat look on my face. Yeah. You know, don't growl at them, <laughs> but let them because we, we've just dumped a lot on them. and keep in mind, I should have prefaced it. So our proposal has already been given out. We've already done it. We've, we've sent ours out on iPads, right? So they can scroll through our pricing is never in there. OK, I verbally give this price and you, know, you can write it, write it on the whiteboard. But once you pause. You know, I want them to come back to us. We are done talking, okay? 
Because a lot of times we'll, we'll say it and then we start trying to immediately justify it and it just comes across as slimy and weak. And, and so just pause. Now, you will run into some of those people that they know the game, right? First person to speak loses. And so they'll just be sitting there staring at you. And for a little while, it's kind of fun. You kind of stare at them. If it's going on for, for uh, a long time, if you're sitting there for five minutes just staring at each other, it gets kind of weird, break the ice. And you always something like, well, you know what? My parents always told me silence is acceptance. So it sounds like we're ready to move forward and see what they say, okay? Get the conversation started. You can kind of have some fun with it. But the main thing is once we deliver the price, pause. We got to wait for the objections to come. All right, uh, Tom, anything to add on that? Before we no, I think you nailed it on I think you nailed it on that. Yeah, I've done the one where you're, you're across from someone who's a pretty seasoned sales professional. They know this move. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you just sit there, kind of flat look on your face, and they're doing the same thing, and then you just grin at them. And yeah. you do that, you can get them to talk first. Yeah, give them a wink, whatever. You know, you just feel the audience. You know, you, you've, been, you've spent time with these people already in the discovery, so you kind of have maybe a rapport going. Just fill it out. But, yeah, I just want us to get in the habit. Once we present, I want to shut up. But you see how I've already, if I didn't have my pricing already done, I couldn't have done it like this. Okay? So I was ready to go. I let them know I'm making the investment for them, 16.47 cents an hour. Boom. All right? Now, we got some objections that are going to come up. We have two kinds I want us to focus on. We have our welcomed objections. These are the ones that we're prepared for. These are the ones that we've done our, our due diligence in the process, and we're happy when we get them. Because every time you get one of these welcomed objections, you just, in your mind, you should, and you should smile because you were one, one question closer to getting this deal signed. Okay? These objections are, you know what? Oh, my gosh, we don't spend that much now. Now, I'm, I'm excited to get this if I've had a good discovery and I can show them what they're spending when I have it. Yes. Okay, I'm going to talk about that. Hey, we want to think about it. This is legitimate. Okay? We want to think about it. We'll show you how to overcome that. Okay? Oh, you guys love this one, right? Oh, we don't, you know, we don't like to do long-term agreements. Okay. One call BS. <laughs> that, that big multifunction copier system they sound like they did not pay cash for. Okay? <laughs> their phones, everything, but this does come up and I'll show you how we, we got to seek to understand, but I'll show you how we overcome that. We also have, you know what? We need to own our own equipment. Maybe that, maybe they don't like the idea of, cause we house it, we own it, our MSP. They say, you know what? Everything's good, but man, I just, I just got to own my own equipment. Okay. I'm cool with that. Those are ones that we can overcome. Now we have failure objections. When these come up, understand that it's, we have failed somewhere in the process. You know what, Tom, man, I, I this, this all looks really good, but Golly, man, this is like a, this is more of a Cadillac offering, dude. Um, you know, we're kind of, we're more of just a Ford company, right? Or, hey, this offering looks like it's designed for, you know, l much larger companies. I mean, we're only 20 employees. What they're saying by this is they feel that we are trying to sell them some part of our offering that they do not need. Okay. You know what? I think we can just go ahead and continue to, to do this ourselves. Okay. We failed to, to break status quo. We failed to show them why the way they're currently doing it is not in their best interest. You know what? We're just going to go ahead and keep the same company. Yeah, I know they're, they're really crappy and, and they haven't shown up in three weeks, but you know what? There's a heck of a lot less than what you're asking for. We're just going to go ahead and limp this along for a little bit. Again, we failed to displace the incumbent. Oh, I love this one, right? Hey, can you go ahead and take this piece out? Hey, everything looks good, but can you take this piece out? And then they say, what does that lower my rate to? Again, we have focused on something. We have highlighted something. We have tried to put something in that we did not tie a perceived value back to so they don't think they need it. Perfect example. Every single one of our managed services clients, our agreement is 24-7 support. And I think that's pretty cool. I think it's a lot of value. We standardized our offering. I think it's cool that our clients can call us whenever they want to, weekdays, weekends, holidays and they get support for their business but if this business we're supporting is an eight by five monday through friday and we're talking about how good our 24 7 support is the next thing they say is hey you know what 24 7 support yeah that sounds pretty cool but like i say we're an eight to five shop monday through friday i don't even think about my business on the weekends can you go ahead and take that piece out then they ask what does that lower my rate to and that guys is if you're lucky if you more than likely what they say is, oh, you know what, I, you know, let me think about it. And then you're like, okay, sure. Can we follow up next week? And they're like, yeah, yeah, I'll call you. 
And then what they're doing in their minds are like, you know, God, dang, if this guy's asking twenty eight hundred dollars a month, and it's you know, I mean, a lot of great stuff in there, twenty four seven support. I bet you I can find it less elsewhere for an eight to five. And they don't even they never call you back, right? Because they're shopping again, they're going somewhere else. Now, and I'm very big. I told you guys to begin this. You got to standardize on your solutions. So again, every network has twenty four seven support. We don't have to talk about it. I talk about we have support during your business hours. And then what happens is they ask you, well, what happens if I come in on a Saturday? Uh, you know what? We'll take care of you. No big deal. Oh, good. Thanks. And you get the thumbs up and we're moving on with our day. Okay. But that's a failure objection. We're talking about something we can't tie back value to. Hey, I don't spend that much now. That's a failure objection if we can't back it up. Right. It really kind of sucks. We did a poor discovery and they say that and you're like, well, yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> what else are we going to do? Okay. So here we go. Let's work through these. As we're going through here with our objections, again, we're talking about our welcome objections. Hope cannot be your strategy. Okay, you cannot hope these objections do not come up. You do not want to hope they don't act, don't say, "Hey, this is more than we're spending right now." Okay, like, oh, I hope they don't ask that. Even though the last 15 companies I presented to asked that same question, you know, please, 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 please. Oh, shoot, they just did. Okay. Hope is not our strategy. We need to be prepared. Uh, we can count on these welcomed objections coming up, nine, one or more of them coming up 95% of the time. So get good at answering all of them. You may get asked one. You may not get hit with any. You may get hit with all of them, but be prepared. They should not be a surprise. When we get an objection, before we respond, okay, it is very important that we seek to understand where the root of the objection is coming from. And again, be prepared, guys. If you're prepared, if you know these are the objections you're going to get up, practice them, role play them, be confident with your answers, okay? All right, so here we go. Let's take a look at one of the, one of the fun ones that come up, right? They're going to ask you something, you know, hey, it's, yeah, hey, we'll make the investment for you for that same 28, 37 a month. And then the question asks, well, oh, that's interesting. I didn't see that coming. Um, Wow, okay, well, do I have a minimum commitment? Or some flavor of that, right? What are our terms? Do we have a minimum commitment? And your response is, yes, 36 months. And you shut up. You answer their question, answer it with confidence because you know what? They may just be curious. But a lot of times you answer the question, uh, you know, yeah, well, it's 36 months, but you know I mean? because uh, you know, most of our stuff, we had a lot of front loaded here and we got the project and we have to get you going. And, you know, it takes us a while to get things quiet, you know, before we're actually really making money and blah, 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 blah. Why, 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 why? That's self-serving. That's about us. It's not client centric. And if you start talking about it, they may not even have an objection with it. They just asked a question. They just wanted to know. But now we just started out, you know, putting our foot in our mouth. Okay. And I've seen it happen time and time again. They ask a question, answer it. Now, Let's say, yeah, you know what, 36 months. Ooh, wow, Tom, you know what, man? I just don't really like getting into long-term agreements, man. Do you have something else we can look at, like a month-to-month? -month? Okay. Now, I, everyone in this, uh, on, this, on this webinar here today, you have probably had that objection, okay? One way, shape, or form. So are you really surprised when they say that? Okay. Your answer is no, because it's come up before. So I'm going to go ahead and disarm them. You know, okay, you don't want to do long-term agreements. You know what, Tom, I'm not surprised that you say that. In fact, many of our clients had the same concerns before signing our agreement and coming on board with us. And in those instances, what it boiled down to is, hey, this is a new relationship, right? There's a natural fear here. What if we don't perform? What if we don't deliver to the expectations or at what we've advertised here today? I can understand 36 months would be a long time to be in an agreement paying for services you're unhappy with. Is that safe to say that's your concern as well? Again, I'm seeking to understand. If they say, yeah, you know, actually, yeah, no, that's definitely, I don't want to pay for services I'm unhappy with. Then we can, then we can close, okay, on that objection. They may come up with something else, you know? No, actually, no, I'm not worried about the performance at all. I'm a non-for-profit. I only have my financing. I can only budget for one year at a time, okay? If we didn't know that ahead of time, that's where we failed <laughs> in understanding their business. But you never know. You know, there may be a reason. Don't just assume it's for performance. 90 plus percent of the time, it is. 
They don't want to pay for something and they want to be able to get out if they're not happy, okay? So, but we have to seek to understand first. Once we know it's performance, when you say, is that safe to say that's your concern as well? And they say, yeah, absolutely. You know, I don't want to pay for services, Tom, that I'm unhappy with. You know what? That's exactly why every single one of our agreements has a performance clause. And it clearly states, if at any point during, during the agreement period, if we are failing to deliver as advertised, you are unhappy with our services, all we ask for is 30 days written notice. Give us that time to remedy the issue. And at the end of that, if we're unable to, 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 to meet your satisfaction or fix the problem, you guys are out of the agreement, no harm, no foul. And then they're gonna say something like, well, is that easy? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, move on. All right? Okay. Yep. I just wanna jump in there on that. Yeah, that was my big thing, is I kinda of, kind of turned this around on the prospect, kind of, like, kind of like what you said, where I say, you know, what I'm actually giving you here is a price that you're gonna pay for the services listed in this agreement over this three year period. And I said to him, quite similar, I said, you know, no, this is not exactly a month to month contract, but you know, you can almost view it that way because the fact is, is if we're unhappy with you and it's not working out or you're unhappy with us, we're not gonna, we're not gonna hold you anything, we're not gonna make you keep paying us. There's a performance clause in here, but here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna figure out how to fix that or we're gonna separate and we're gonna walk away from it. But that doesn't really happen out that often but if it does you're gonna be able to get out of something that you're no longer comfortable with and you know what if you're worried about business wise it might be too much money over time maybe you're gonna lose some big contract you ever something like that we're gonna work with you on that too but I'm not gonna sit here and, and, and try to take money from your company or money you don't have we're gonna work with you on that and that long-term agreement is really as long as it works for both of us and you're willing to pay and you can pay and we're doing what we promise yeah that's where it is guys Simple enough, seek to understand where their concern is coming from. If it's around performance, which again, 90 plus percent of time it is, let them know you have a performance clause and move on. Satisfy their concern. That's it. Now, maybe the only objection you get, and they're like, okay, well, let's do this thing. All right, or we may get some more. So we got to be ready. I want us to think about the next one here. So they may go, okay, well, I'm cool with this agreement now. All right, Tom, thanks for, for letting me know about that. That seems reasonable. But at the end of this 36 months, do we own the equipment? Our response is, no, we maintain ownership of the equipment. And they may go, okay, right? Or they may have an objection with it. Again, answer with confidence and then just see if they have a problem with it. Don't always assume because they ask a question, it's an objection. Yeah, hey, you know what? Yeah, no, it's it. We maintain ownership of the equipment. Ooh, gee golly, Tom. You know what? We've been in business 25 years, and we've always owned our own equipment. Man, do we have an option where where we can own it? Okay, and I mean, that's not an objection, guys, right? But this is where that strategy comes into play. Before I give them the answer, I want to reiterate because again, once I once I answer them, they're not listening to anything else I'm saying. So I want to tell about the value of we owning it before I give them the solution. But I would say but something along the lines of, yeah, Tom, absolutely, we have an option for that. You know, many clients have expressed the same concerns as well. Uh, however, I will tell you, there are some advantages if we maintain, uh, maintain ownership of the, the equipment. First and foremost, we're going to refresh your network every three years. And then I can go back to my Visio diagram where I show the before, where it's all red. And I say, because we never want to get back into a state where we are sitting today. So every three years, we, ref we, we refresh the equipment. You pick a charity you want to donate it to. We donate it on your behalf. And there we go. Now, the second thing is you always have, we have software assurance included. So anytime Microsoft updates an operating system, adds a new version of Office, your entire company has access to that. So you're all working on the same, same solution at all times. And the third, which a lot of um, our clients like, especially you, Mr. CFO, is with us maintaining ownership of the equipment, this is now an operational expense for you versus a capital investment that you're going to have to depreciate over time and manage the assets. But hey, again, if you want to own the, own the equipment, no problem at all. You just go ahead and cut a check for 20 grand up front, right? That's our project that I already went through, right? I already showed them. And then instead of $28.34 a month, your services will drop to $2,278 a month. That's $13.25 an hour that we already worked out on our pricing schedule. Okay, and then I want to close. Which option works best for you? 
Okay. And anytime we can get a close in there, I want to try to close. So yeah, okay. absolutely. 2834 a month, but if you want to own it, $20,000 up front. And instead of that 2834 a month, it's going to reduce your services to 2278 or $13.25 an hour. Which option works best for you? And that's where the bean counter in the room is doing the calculator, doing the math and saying, wow, this is like a interest-free financing if I'm doing my math correctly. So yeah, we're not a bank. Which option works best for you? And see what they say. If they want to own it, that's not an objection. You got the project, you're, already, you're, you're securing the monthly at the same time. But more than likely, they're going to be like, yeah, dang, that doesn't make sense. You know, we get a refresh. You can keep, uh, you manage the licensing. I can write this thing off. And it's interest free. God, hey, man, we'd be silly not to use your money. Right? That's what they're thinking. Okay? But that, that's, a neat, that's a pretty easy one, guys. You give them the options. And we, because we've already presented it in a way that they were, it's not like it's a surprise. Okay? We also are going to have, <clears throat> here's a fun one. Okay, well, that seems reasonable here. You know, it makes sense to, to, to go with the, you know, 2834, um, you know, use the interest-free loan there. Um, but golly, you know what, that, Tom, that's just a tough pill to swallow, man. I mean, that's a heck of a lot more than we're spending right now. And then you get that in some flavor, okay? At this point in time, if you don't have your facts and if you haven't done a great discovery, you should be, you, you know, do like gulp. <laughs> You're kidding me, really? Are you sure? <laughs> All right. But here's how we want to do it. Again, I kind of want to, I want to, I want to seek to understand it. Here's a really cool thing. Once they say, hey, that's, that's more than I'm spending right now, immediately, you know, in their mind, they have a number of what they're spending. Because during the discovery, I'm not asking what they spend on technology or whatever. It's almost irrelevant. I gotta, I'm focusing on the discovery. I'm focusing on the business implications. And I'm, I'm putting wasted time, downtime, hours, whatever I can do to, to, to tip the scale, right, when I go to present because I know I'm going to get this. But I don't spend that much now. Now it's our time to get some more money. Well, you know what? Um, I didn't – I didn't feel it was my place to, you know, dig through your invoices and as it relates to technology. Uh, but God, if you have to put a number to it, what are you spending right now? And they'll give you a number. I don't know, thousand dollars a month. And look surprised. You'd be like, ah, oh, man. Okay. Well, I mean, does that include parts and 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 hardware and, and labor? See if you can get some more. They may say, yeah, no, that includes everything. Or they may say, ah, you know what? And then, you know, let's go fifteen hundred a month. That's what we're spending right now. And then you have your number up there. That's almost 3000. Say, God dang. Well, I can see your initial concern. I mean, we're, we're coming in at double what you're, what you're spending right now. So now I have that $1,500 they're spending or whatever number they give you. Okay. That I'm going to add to whatever my totals are here as far as my expense, sex, excessive spending. So once you get that number, you put it down and then you go, well, you know what? Let me show you what you're spending by not having us on board. And I click, I have this slide built into my deck. I do a buffer slide. Then I have this slide. Now, all these numbers that we present are facts that they have given us, okay? That's the key here. You have to present in facts. There is no assumptions in this part. And here's an example. So let me show you what you're spending by not having us on board. Tom, you guys were down for three days last year with, with a few outages. And you told me when your company is down without the use of technology and, and being able to, to – to uh, support your clients and, and productivity and get invoices out, that's costing your company $35,000 a day. There's 105 grand. As a result of it, you lost one of your top clients. According to your sales director, that was 65,000 a year. Now, poor Mary, our office manager, who also doing the IT, she's spending 20 hours a week. Now look, I don't know what Mary makes, and it wasn't my place to ask, but I'm assuming she at least makes minimum wage. That's what I put those numbers to, that's 16,800 for the year. And you kind of see where I'm going with this. You had excessive project overruns. And the Mr. CFO, you mentioned that was in excess of $20,000. We, we audited your phone and internet bills. And we not only were able to upgrade your speeds for your company, but we're also able to save you an additional $4,800 a year from what you're spending right now. Your total excessive spending last year alone was upwards of $211,000. Unless, obviously, if the numbers were three grand a month. You know, and we're asking you to make a yearly investment in your technology of 36K. That's over 175 grand in savings. Now, what you're going to get, okay, and the numbers not, aren't always this high, okay, but, but nonetheless, I want you to get the concept of it. And if you have something over, you know, there was outages, they always can say, well, that's not typical or, you know, blah, 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 blah. We know that's coming up. So pause for a second. Say, now, look, 
let's just say when you were giving me these numbers, again, I'm putting it back on them, these are their numbers. Let's just say we were overzealous. Let's say we estimated high. You know what, let's say we estimated 50% high. Let's go ahead and cut this number in half. We're still saving you over $80,000 a year. Let them soak on that. Here's another slide we can go to if we need to, okay? And then where, what's also nice is once we go through that, you know, let's say we cut it in half, so we're still saving you over 80 grand a year. Now, we can go ahead and add that $1,500 a month that you're spending for IT right to this bottom line as well. And I just juiced it based on another number they gave me. Okay, now we have some other spending that we can talk about. If they go, oh, you know, I still need to think about it. Hey, totally understand, but something else to consider while we're thinking about it. As we, well, while these numbers are facts and these are the numbers that were, were hard coded that you provided for us that what happened last year, we have identified some other inefficiencies and some assumptions around the network. You have 25 employees that spend an average 15 minutes a day filtering spam. That's 124 hours a month. 25 systems take an average of 15 minutes every day uh, throughout the day to turn on and reboot. That's another 124 hours a month. Two server reboots a week, 10 hours a month. You see where I'm going with this? So it's very important during your discovery when say, hey, how, you know, um, is your computer slow? Well, uh, yeah, yeah, it is. So do you have to restart it every morning? Yeah. Well, how long does that take? Whatever time they give you. Now, is that every day? Yes. Multiple times a day? Yes. How often? Right? We got to seek to understand because we're going to use this, this, this number here in our favor. Okay. Remote location loses connections. 20 hours, right? Restarts. You, you see where this is going. We have statistics, all right? That uh, employees waste average, you know, two hours a day, right? 60% of employees, you can go look on Google, there's plenty of statistics on it to back it up. Majority have spent on online activities. So we have a slide where we're presenting this as far as our internet filtering and bandwidth conservation, okay, that we're providing to the company. So as a part of it, say, you know what, industry trends say 60%, let's just say only 20% of your employees are wasting two hours a day on internet sites. That's 200 hours. Subtotal, we have 484 wasted hours. At the California minimum wage of 1050, that's a little over five grand of inefficiencies. Now, let's just say we're 75% inaccurate when it comes to these numbers. Let's take out 3,000. You're still adding another $1,270 a month in estimated wasted salary dollars from inefficiencies that we're currently running into today. I hope you guys are starting to, the wheels are turning to understand in order to present like this, be confident with your answers and back them with facts, you have to have a good discovery. It is not just our rapid fire tools report. It is not about the technology. Okay, it is not about the infrastructure. We have got to get people to open up and share about their challenges as it relates to them and their roles and not about technology. They don't care about technology. You try to ask them about technology, that's why they shut down and they don't wanna to talk to you. Talk about something that's relevant to them, their role, right, in the company. When people, you're talking about something that's relevant to them, they get excited, they're, they're opening, they're wanting to open up and share. You talk about things that people are not interested in, they glaze over, they don't wanna have a conversation with you. This is in every aspect of our life, right, as we're having conversations, okay? So, once we go through that, okay, we got to show them the excessive spending, really show them, well, hey, you know what, it's, this is what we're, you know, spending by not having us, we got to see what they say, okay? Now, once we go through that, they're going to say something, and Tom, if you have anything to add, please, you know, just cut me off and, and jump in. But once we go down, down there, there, what was that? No, uh, keep going. This is great. Okay. I, lo I love focusing on the one. I don't spend that much now because they often are spending that much. They just don't realize it. Yeah, and it's our job to uncover it. It's not their job. All right? They just know what they're, what they're cutting out. So once we go through that, we handle that objection. Then here comes this one. Well, you know what, Tom, man, thank you so much. It, uh, golly, this is really eye-opening. This is extremely thorough. We've, we've never been involved in a presentation like this. You're giving us a lot to think about. I'm going to go ahead and get with my team, and I'm going to go ahead and we're going to give it some serious thought, and then I'm going to go ahead and get back to you. All right? We get someone some way, shape, or form. Now, the challenge is most salespeople say, okay, and they just settle for a future appointment to come back, right, because they had time to think about it. 
and here's what the real challenge I used to I used to really think oh yeah this is a big decision for them they need to think about it and they need to go get you know everyone involved and you know but reality is it's not okay it's not like they're going to break from the appointment they're going to go back to their office and they're going to say okay hey all right guys you know we promised Nick we're going to think about it so let's all sit around this table let's give it some serious thought it doesn't happen okay what they're saying is I want to talk freely and I really don't want to do it in front of you because you're standing here. Okay. You're, you're the salesperson. But the challenge is I want to try to close the day that we present. Okay. You are the elephant in the room. They're not allowed to speak freely or talk or quote unquote think about it with you standing there. So I first, when I get the objection that they want to think about it, we have to seek to understand what it is they want to think about. Because maybe we've missed something. Maybe there's, there's a piece that we need to cover. If they need to think about anything other than the investment, which we're going to get to, then we're, we're, we're not ready to close. Okay? So, hey, you know what? Yeah, I want to give this some serious thought. I'm going to get back to you. And also, here's a challenge. When I say we have to present to the authority to buy it, it's not just the CEO. I want to get the influencers in that organization all around the table at the same time because a legitimate uh, objection that will come up is, you know what, hey, this is great. Thanks so much, Tom, for your time. I'm going to go back to the office. I want to get in front of my team. I want to go over and make sure I have their buy-in before we, we ever make a decision like this. You cannot close. If you try to close, you're slimy. I mean, what are you going to say? No, come on, really? You're the CEO. You don't need to talk to your team about that. They'll do whatever you say. Just go ahead and sign this thing. Let's get it on. No, oh, that's slimy because every single person you guys sitting on the on the on the webinar here today, you would go seek counsel with your right hand people, right, in your organization before making uh you know some some of the business decisions. So we know that. Let's get them all around the room at the same time. I want to take that objection out of the way, but we have to seek. A, we have to understand what they want to think about. So you know what? So you know what, Tom? I'm not surprised to hear you say that, man. I mean, there'd be no reason to think about it unless you were serious about moving forward, right? They're going to say, yeah, well, just to, you know, I, again, totally understand here to make sure I've covered everything we possibly can today here is what you need to think about any part of our services here. And you can popcorn off, go through some of the services. You know, we're going to take the time off of Mary. We're going to do this. We're going to get it back. We're going to do the backup, right? Are we good on this? Are we good on the services? If they have any challenges with it, that's what you need to, you need to figure that out. Okay. But if they say, no, no, this all looks good. That, that all looks good. Very thorough. I think you're going to take care of, of uh, all the needs we had and even address some of the ones that we didn't know we had. Okay. Well, if it's not this, is, is it any part of the network that we're bringing in? Anything that our engineer Mark addressed for you? And again, if there's an issue with this or they have questions, then we have to seek to understand and work that out. But otherwise, if they say, no, this all, uh, I know the solution, the network, everything looks, looks good. Okay. Now I want to try to close. So I'm going to ask, okay, is it safe to say it's the investment then? And if it's not, whatever they bring up, seek to understand. But if it's, yeah, you know, it's, it's a number four. It's like I say, it's not out of the question. I just want to, you know, want to, want to get with my team and think about it. Hey, I totally understand. Um, but I know how hard it is for all you guys to get together at the same time to specifically talk about, about your technology. And I also know you guys can't speak freely with me sitting here in the room. Would it make sense for me to step out of the room for 15, 20 minutes, let you guys discuss? And then you pause for a second because once you do that's pretty hard close. Once you do that, they're, they're, they're sitting there, they're kind of puckering in their seats. Okay. But I want to give them that option. Then you pause and say, or would it make sense to have an appointment, uh, you know, to meet reconvene ne early next week? They're going to jump all over that next appointment. Yeah. yeah I know early next week, that gives us the weekend, you know, to think about it. Because one of the biggest challenges you guys have is securing a follow-up date and time. Oh, well, we'll get back to you. Okay, this gets in front of that. I still don't want to come back next week, but I'm, my, I'm, now, I'm, now I got my second best close. Okay? So, okay, Monday or Tuesday? Tuesday. Morning or afternoon? Afternoon. Three o'clock? Yeah, works good. Do we need to have everyone involved or just you and I? Nope, let's, let's uh, just you and I. Okay, you have your phone out because your calendar appointment is on there as you're sitting around the room. Now, as I mentioned, we, we, pr we give our proposals on iPads, okay? Not a price associated with them, but it says one of two things. If you give a paper proposal, they take it and they put it in their bag. It's not theirs to keep. They didn't pay for it. They're not going to put an iPad in their bag, okay? You don't have to go chase them out of the hallway, try to get some paper. Paper's worthless. Use technology. We put it on an iPad, but here's where it comes into play. 
I have the calendar appointment up in my hand for the follow-up, right? They're starting to pack up their things. You know what, Tom, before I hit, hit send here, man, I wouldn't be a sales professional if I didn't have some kind of call to action to move this along, only because we've agreed the solution's right, the services that we're going to perform, the network's going to take your company to the next level where you need to be as far as your growth and goals. I think we can also agree we have a ridiculous amount of excessive spending that's happening that needs to stop. And in fact, one of the only things that, that isn't ridiculous is the low hourly rate in which our companies have come on board to take care of all this for you. So with that being said, if you guys are willing to authorize this agreement today, bring us on as your technology partner. These iPads you have in front of you are yours to take home, my gift. So should I step out for 15, 20 minutes that you speak freely? Or do you want me to pick up the iPads? I'll hit send on the invite and we'll talk next Tuesday at 3 p.m. And then see what they say. Because here's the deal. When you give everyone, there may be an office manager sitting there. There may be other people in the company. If I'm only going to give the owner a break, credit a month or whatever, it's only, it's only benefiting them. I want everyone else to be vested around that room, kicking him or her under the table, saying, really, we're going to think about this? Right, they've already updated the icons, right? They have, a, they have a child's birthday coming up. iPads are pretty cool. We have some pretty good success rate with that. But I wanna to try to close today. Then you may run into, you know what? I really would like to, to do this. I think that's great, but man, I have, to, I have to seek legal review. Again, we know that may come up. You have your letter of intent ready to go. It's already documented. Just say, hey, I'm not surprised to hear you say that. I totally, totally understand that. Tell you what, go ahead and sign this document here. It says we're agreeing to the pricing and the terms. I'm giving you 10 days for, to pen legal review. If there's any issues, you know, what it, we'll address them there. If we can't, then we, then we go our separate ways. No big deal. But this signing this agreement allows you to walk home with these iPads today. Once they walk away with the iPads, the deal's done. Okay. But you have to be prepared. And I know we're running on time here, guys. So I apologize. <clears throat> Failure objections. Okay. So those are our welcome objections. That's what we want. We have to be prepared. We're handling it in the process ahead of time. When we get failure objections, guys are very hard to recover from. Hey, take that piece out, right? Or we have to mismatch the client. Well, you know what? That's not, I, you know, I'm not spending that much now. Yeah, you are. Really? No, I'm actually not. Yeah, yeah, you are. <laughs> okay. Right? We have to, or we have to compromise our, our price or our offering. Yeah, you know what? I really don't like his 24-7 support. Or really, I don't see a value in having a backup or blah, 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 blah. Then you're trying to like, oh, okay, I can remove that. And let me put this cheaper solution in that I'm not really sold on. But you know what? It's less expensive. Let me try to fit into your budget, sir. Okay, it makes it very tough for us. We have compromised our standards, which we don't want to do. After we answer, shut up. Okay, they ask you a question, answer it, be quiet. Okay, don't try to keep explaining your answer. If they have an issue with it, they will ask another question or a follow up. Agree and understand. Okay, don't just answer before you know all the facts. Again, we have to seek to understand where it's coming from. And guys, prepare. Don't just hope that an objection is not going to come up. Have your answers ready. If, again, we can bank on one of these objections, these welcomed objections or more, if we know they're very common, and trust me, they are, practice. Have your numbers. Know how you're going to respond to it. Role play with your salespeople before they go out and present. It's one of the things that we do with our, our MSP. They have to actually fill out an application to earn the right to go present. That covers all of our five prerequisites. If you don't know what the five prerequisites are, jump on the last uh, Ignition webinar. We went through those extensively, okay? Now, as we're concluding here today, guys, you have some choices to make. Look at your organization. If you guys are getting through the sales process, you're not getting objections, you're closing all the deals that come your way. If it's not broke, don't fix it, okay? Continue doing what you're doing. If you're having troubles, Okay, if you're not getting the close rates you want, if you're not bringing on the, the revenue or the type of revenue you want, just self-study, continue to go on to webinars, you know, listen, but that's going to take the longest time to get things done, right? Maybe another option, you got to hire a general training organization to come in, teach you sales one-on-one -on -one best practices. But the challenge is these companies make their money on selling to multiple different verticals, teaching how to sell insurance, how to sell cars, all these fun things that then you have to take that information try to mold it, tweak it to make it fit what we do as technology service providers, and now you're back to self-studying and you paid for a consultant. Or, guys, another option as always is engage more with Chartech. Tom brought it up earlier. We have our last Chartech Academy of the Year coming up. We open our MSP for three days and we will show you how we run our business from top to bottom, 
sales, marketing, service delivery, operations, HR, finance, you name it. You'll be out here with 100 plus other MSPs, all sharing best practices, all learning, right, at our MSP. The next uh, event is December 5th through 7th, okay? So a few weeks from now. If you're a Chartech members, everything that I've talked about is on our resource site, all our role play videos, everything you have access to, you and your company have unlimited access to our academies. You just need to register. Get out here, okay? If you're not a Chartech member and you'd like to see what the academy is about, we have guest passes, $895 a seat. Come out here for three full days, okay? Engage with, with a master MSP. Now, here's the special coming from Axiant. They're helping to subsidize this for you. $575 a seat. Okay, if you're interested in coming out, December, $575. And here is your registration link to take advantage of that. Charttech.net backslash academy hyphen Axiant. And that'll take you right there. Um, get your tickets. Seats are limited at this point. But I really hope to, uh, to see some of you guys out there. And Tom, we're right here on time, but I'm not sure if we have any questions we want to go through. Well, Nick, I just want to uh, touch on one thing you had earlier, um, just a little tip to kind of leave people with. You were talking about, you know, sometimes changing price. The only time I ever changed price on a contract when I was sitting, standing in front of the prospect, I knew I was going to do it before I came in there. You know, you've had these early conversations and you may get some kind of tip from, from that, that CEO, that owner, someone who says like, oh, yep. I never pay full price for anything or one of these. Oh, things. yes. So, so what I would do is I'd come in and I'd have like, I'd be like, I know I'm going to sign for 2,500, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put 2,750 on this contract, knowing, knowing that that's going to be the objection and I'm going to then cross it out and write, and write 2,500 and I'll tell them I'll send them a, a copy that has it all correct. But I would do it planned. I really never did it. I would never compromise on price unless I had it planned in my mind before I came in the room. That brings up a good point, Tom, um, because here's the thing. No matter what it's, we have those some clients that just want a deal, right? It doesn't matter if you said, hey, our services are zero. They're going to say, you know, I need you to pay me five bucks, right? We always have those. So exactly. we, 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 we have the same thing. I just don't, I, um, I'm very big. And again, this is planned ahead of time. If I give something, I want to get something in return, okay? We don't want to set the precedence that we're just going to, every time we give them a price, it's negotiable type of deal. So one of the things that we do, because they may ask us, hey, $2,800 a month, can you do it for $2,500? I want to make sure if I ever do any negotiation, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get a, a signed deal today. Because otherwise, they go, okay, I'm going to still think about it. They go talk to somebody else. Hey, I can do it for $24. i will come back to you. And now we're in this, this, this Walmart you know, bargain bin trying to, trying to uh, meet to the bottom. So one of the things that we do, if they ask for, hey, you know what, can we uh, $2,500? And I'll say, hey, all right, so Tom, it sounds like you've made the decision to move forward. And if we can come to terms on the price you're going to sign today, See what they yeah. say. If they say, nope, I still got to go think about it. Then we need to go through those objections. Or if they say, no, nah, you know, I still got to guess. We'll tell you what, it doesn't sound like you made the decision yet. Once you made the decision to bring us on as your partner, we can, we can, we can talk and see what we can do here on the investment. If they say, then I'm moving on, right? I'm not going to give them anything. If they say, yeah, you know what? If you can do $2,500 a month, then I'll sign right now. Boom. Let's figure it out. Now, here's what I've done ahead of time in case this comes up. First, I want to let them, I get, I got to set the precedence. Say, hey, I can, I totally understand the, 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 the need for a deal here. All right. I totally get it. Um, but I want you to know that the pricing that we've put forth is what your company needs to provide the service you need to take your company from point A to point B. And it provides us the flexibility to make sure we can maintain and, and keep the talent. So, but again, I understand the need for a deal. So tell you what, it's $2,800 if you want to pay monthly. If you want to pay quarterly, we'll knock off 2%. If you want to pay annually, we'll knock off 4%. If you want to pay the full 36 months up front, we can knock off 7%. And then you have your totals. Which option works best for you? Right? I want to try to get a little something from it. I haven't paid quarterly. Knock off, a, knock off some percentage. So there's a lot of ways you can do it. But the, to your point, Tom, these are all things that are done ahead of time. I have an agreement for, for monthly. I have an agreement for the quarterly payments. I have an agreement for the annual or the, or the, or the agreement term. It's all ready to go on my iPad. So I don't have to come back and I'll fix it. And I'm having them sign it right then and there. And we're, we're getting that check and we're trying to move on with our day. Nick, I would just say, my big thing is, as you said, if you're going to deal, know that before you go in, that you have a possibility you're going to deal and how far you're going to go because you 
not want to you do not want to get involved in negotiations or negotiating price outside of what you predetermined was acceptable or you talked back at headquarters about what you're going to do because you can very quickly get caught up in the moment and be so concerned about them signing that you then make a mistake and bring it too low and you kill your profit so have the price in mind that you're willing to go down to or what you're willing to give back to them is that kind of person and stick to those during the negotiation and do it if you have to yep yeah only, like you say only only if you have to and like i say it's prepared ahead of time we like if we're going to discount i want a prepayment of some kind all right it just gets a little bit more you know like i'm not just lowering my price um but you guys have your numbers prepared and at the end of the day if if the answer is no we have to walk away be okay walking away there like tom mentioned there's nothing worse than you taking a a, a a, a new account on and you're all excited because you're invoicing five thousand dollars on the first of every month but by the end of the month you've had to invest six thousand dollars to support it okay <laughs> walk away all right nick well, i think we're pretty much uh ready to go there we don't have any questions but um are, do you have anything else you want to add nope uh i mean don't, uh, you know like i say guys objections are the one thing that's going to stand in your way Standardize your process. If you do it the same way, you can hedge your bet on what objections you're going to get. You can avoid the objections you don't want to come up, kill it earlier in the sales process. And if you are struggling at all with any of this, guys, engage. That's what Chartech is here for. This is what we do with MSPs, working and help them improve their business all day long. Come to Academy. There's your registration link. If you have questions, you want to learn more about the membership details and the resources we provide in the coaching, email membership at chartech.net and we'll take care of you. Yeah, I um, just want to say it's a wonderful deal uh, that Chartech has offered, uh, partners of Axian, and I'm going to be out there as well on uh, December 5th through 8th, I guess that's the date, and uh, looking forward to it. Thanks a lot, Nick. All right, guys. Thanks, Tom.